Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Birmingham Unitarian Church. It's time for us to get started with our call to worship. We are a justice-making, truth-seeking people. We gather as a community of believers and seekers. We share a reverence for the mystery of life. We are building the beloved community. Come, let us worship together.
We light our chalice today for the gifts of creativity that transcend time and belief. Today, Schubert's Mass of 1815 becomes our celebration of these gifts in music and in song. They endure and we find meaning in them because they are rooted in that greatest unifying force, love. Please rise as you're willing and able and join in singing our first hymn, Let Christmas Come, number 224 in your gray hymnal. Franz Schubert was born in Vienna in 1797 to a musical family. The family played string chords tests together, young Franz on viola. He studied organ and theory with the church's organist and soon after won a scholarship to join the Imperial Court Chapel where he met Salieri, his new mentor. It was here he developed a sense for chamber music, refining his piano skills and learning to conduct. In 1812, Schubert's voice broke, forcing him to leave the choir. He was persuaded to attend teacher's college, and immediately after graduating, he began teaching at the school where his father was a principal. Although teaching gave Schubert financial stability, he was not happy and devoted most of his time to composing. In 1814, almost all of his composition was devoted to vocal works. An example is his first attempt at writing leader or song Gretchen on Spinrad, Gretchen and the Spinning Wheel, a haunting tune with intense dynamics set to Goethe's poetry, accompanied by abundance of tone painting with the piano emulating a spinning wheel. In 1815, Schubert at age 18 writes the Mass in G, today's choral work in six days. It was written for his parish church, originally set for choir, strings and organ, but a score was later found that had wins added some scholars believing done by his brother. Today's Mass in G is the shortest and most often performed of the Schubert's, of Schubert's six Masses. It is in six sections, Kyrie, Lord have mercy, Gloria, glory to God, Credo, we believe, Sanctus, holy, Benedictus, blessed, and Agnus Dei, Lamb of God. Music historians agree, agree that Schubert bridges the gap between classical and romantic music. His music is very, mel 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 uh, very melodic and easy on the ear, but also has a flair for drama. Before Schubert's passing in 1823, at the age of 31, he was penniless, but had written over 600 liter, seven complete symphonies, and six masses, and a prolific list of chamber music. As we enter the Christmas holidays, your all-volunteer BUC Chalice Choir is thrilled to present to you a setting of the Catholic Mass, the most holy of devotional music for Christians, a part of our UU heritage.
The mission of Birmingham Unitarian Church is to be a free and welcoming religious community that encourages the lives of integrity, learning, service, and joy. One way that we live out this mission is by giving half of our weekly offering to a nonprofit organization that shares our values and addresses needs in one of these areas, environmental action, economic justice, civic engagement, and racial justice. We support a new organization each month. Our recipient for December is Welcome In. Welcome In is run by South Oakland Citizens for the Homeless, and it is the only daytime shelter for unhoused people in Oakland County. It is in full operation from December to March, providing guests with a warm place to spend the day, hot lunches, clothing, social services, and health visits. Additionally, this is a low, a low barrier shelter, which means that anyone seeking shelter at Welcome In is accepted without requirements such as a background check or a photo ID. Let there be an offering in support of our beloved community and organizations that build the world that we dream about. This morning's offering will now be received with gratitude.
We've come to the time in our service that we set aside for centering and prayer, spiritual practices. We begin with our own version of prayers of the people, what we call joys and, and sorrows in Unitarian Universalist churches. Uh, this morning, we have a lot to be thankful for, uh, a lot of joys to share. Uh, first, I'm so grateful and joyful for all the kids that we have with us today. Um, also, if you came in and, and your parents hustled you to the back, there's a spot up here with cushions and crayons. You're welcome to come and go as you please to this area over here. Also, there's a, a room, a family room back over here if you need a change of environment, but you have to be under the age of 10. <laughs> Uh, also, uh, this morning we have a lot of joy for the excellent piece that we that we have pieces that we have the uh, the ensemble and the choir. I want to say thank you for all of the hours of work that went into today's presentation and today's service. Thank you so much for creating an exciting worship experience for us, and thank you especially to you, Appa, for your vision in this. Uh, we also have a joy from Emmett Van Houten. Emmett says, a couple of weeks ago, I got notice that I've been accepted to St. Olaf College, where I'll be joining my significant other to con continue my pursuit of biology. Congratulations, Emmett. <laughs> and of course, we hate to see you go, and you're always welcome when you're here. Um, this morning, we also have some sorrows. We have sorrows that are too close to be shared, some that were submitted online with the request not to share aloud. I want to acknowledge that those were received. And then also, I think we, many of us carry on our hearts some, some heaviness over the recent um, you know, pro prolific anti-Semitic rhetoric that has been happening in our country. Anti-Semitism is a wildfire that cannot be tolerated or excused and our hearts especially this morning are with temple bethel and the harassment that occurred on their property on uh, friday that is unacceptable and hate has no home in unitarian universalism or in this country it's heavy times that we live in when we have to face this again i invite you now to join me in a spirit of prayer and centering Spirit of love and life, great mystery that is known by many names and no name at all. As we enter into this holiday season today, we are focused on the celebration of Christmas and the Catholic Mass. This is a time that has historically been a time of, of waiting, a time of expectation. In our times, it has become a time of hurriedness. So let's find the patience to wait. Let us find gratitude for things that come in their own time, on their own terms. Let us find ways to be grateful for the small things among us, to be willing to make space for the unexpected, to find joy where we never at once thought that it could possibly be. Because where else would it be besides where it is needed most? Let us be open to each other. Let us be open to new things, must be open to love. 
May it be so. Amen, and blessed be. So the mass that you're hearing today is one of Schubert's earliest works. This is a portion of a piano sonata that he wrote the year that he died. And so we're getting a little bit of the range of Schubert today.
See what you guys did by giving me this uh, music stand that goes down every time I look at it. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I'm a professional. We have one reading today. It's from uh, Lenny Scoville. It's titled The Meaning of Christmas. Why Christmas? Especially to one who doubts. Are you not being hypocritical? Unitarian Universalists with their penchant for secular humanism are fond of arguing the validity of Christmas. Is it a Christian holiday? Is it a pagan holiday? A secular holiday? Even outside my UU circles, there is much apathy about Christmas. It's just another day I've heard quoted by many. I know all of this and I don't care. I love Christmas, always have and always will. It fills me with nostalgia and generosity and goodwill. And as far as the meaning of Christmas is concerned, as a Unitarian Universalist, I believe that it is part of our spiritual maturation to search for and assign meaning to all of the days of our lives. And this Christmas is the high watermark of the year a time when the world slows when we consider our relationships with each other. Isn't that in itself enough to celebrate? Worthy of decoration, lights, and music? The gifts that we give each other at this time of year are more than just demonstrations of our generosity. They are symbols of the gifts that we are capable of giving all of the days of our lives. Gifts of love, compassion, industry, advocacy, the gifts of our common humanity. These were the values of Jesus, the true Christian values. And if we as Unitarian Universalists need to reconcile the language of Jesus as the savior in celebrating Christmas, can we acknowledge that through his ministry of compassion, he was in fact our savior? by showing us the way to save ourselves. Since going to be in our last thing, it came upon a midnight stage. Slide to the bottom of my book here. <laughs>
As we come to the end of our service, we have one more movement after the benediction. Our benediction in English comes now. Go now into this world as a beacon of hope and joy. Go in love. Go in peace. As our worship ends, so will our service begin. May it be so.